Holly Hetzner didn't grow up in Lansing, but Lansing has grown on her. For her, home is more than the address she shares with her husband, Matt. It's a sense of place and pride she spends each day trying to build. Things are happening right now. Right. Holly and Matt have chosen to build their lives and careers in Lansing, a city that's transforming its historic manufacturing pedigree into a high-tech modern profile. It's a profound change from where they grew up in a small Michigan tourist town. Uh, we actually met in Frankmuth. We were high school sweethearts and I moved to Lansing as a law school bride. Um, my husband started law school and we decided to get married before that all started and that's how I moved down here. The Hetzners married in 2006 when Matt finished his undergraduate degree at Michigan State University. Life in East Lansing that first year was tough. Both were juggling work and school. Holly soon found that being a self-professed law school bride was a lonely existence. Matt was in night school when she came home from work. Newly married in a new city, Holly was forced to navigate her environment alone. I was all on my own, and if I got lost, I had to find my way. If I needed a bank, I had to find it. It was kind of, I was very independent. The experience gave Holly a window on the worlds of spouse and student. Living in married housing, Holly loved the youthful energy that radiated from the campus into the city. After graduation, the couple focused on their professional tracks. They'd sought out and met their educational goals in East Lansing. Shifting from college to career, the Hetzners decided to move to the bigger city next door. Today, they live in an apartment complex in South Lansing. And then moving into Lansing, it was kind of a difference because we were getting away from more of the college town, the, the, the younger set, and getting into more of the young professional group where we are now. So it's, it was just a little bit of a change, but I, I enjoyed it. It seemed like it was a little more mature. People were a little more interested in going to work every day and being a little more nose to the grindstone, but it was still equally as interesting. The Hetzners had found a place that suited their personal work ethic. They love being in Lansing. But Holly senses that the city is still struggling to define its own character. Lansing is the center of state government, a city of services. Certainly the city enjoys having an internationally acclaimed university just outside its borders, and its rich automotive legacy is still intact. But is Lansing something else, apart from those landmarks? Holly wants to see more people like her discover what that is and make the choice she did to live here. Well, I think Lansing, the city, has a perception now of being the place where you work and not really the place where you live. You know, you go downtown to eat, you go downtown to have fun and go to a festival every now and then to see silver bells in the city, but then when that's all over, you leave and go to the suburbs. I don't think many young professionals even think about living in Lansing. Um, and the, I think it would be great if Lansing the city could work on identifying ways to bring these young professionals into living into the city, to create housing that would attract them, that has the, the Wi-Fi, the, um, good satellite or cable or has um, quick access to transportation systems like the CADA system or things like that or where they can walk downtown and eat or go to school. I think that's what's important to people. Holly believes she's found a workplace that gives her an avenue to act on her personal civic vision. She's a special projects administrator with the nonprofit Prima Civitas Foundation. It's one of several area agencies at the forefront of an effort to usher the state into the emerging knowledge-based economy. A big part of its mission is to build public confidence in an improved quality of life. Uh, we want people to understand that uh, there is no reason why Michigan can't be home and you can't be successful and, and do everything that you want to do. Um, and that's part of the, the work that we do every day. Well, so here's what I think. Prima Civitas views itself as a conduit for grassroots change. But like many organizations, it too faces a perception of being yet another layer of bureaucracy between people and progress. We understand that this only works from the ground up. Um, that if this is uh, driven from the top, um, that it will be just another flavor of the month type uh, initiative or flavor of the month uh, uh, approach. And what we're seeking is long-term uh, transformation for the region. And that isn't about me, it isn't about Holly, it isn't about the people who work here. It's about the citizenry and making sure that uh, everybody who lives here uh, buys into the notion that things are different. Um, 
It's not necessarily a bad thing, but things are different. And we need to operate um, based on those differences. Among her duties, Holly coordinates the foundation's Moving Ideas to Market program. It's an initiative designed to create a support pipeline for emerging entrepreneurs from kindergarten through college. For Holly, the work represents a very personal investment. I have a family who has entrepreneurs. Um, my husband is thinking about starting his own law firm. So I'm really passionate about that. I'm also passionate about talent retention and keeping skilled talent in Michigan. I've had a lot of family members graduate from college and think, what now, and move away. And I just would hate to see that happen. I'd love to keep them here or in their home communities. To get that access. Holly uh, has been uh, a key component of that um, initiative, uh, along with um, really scores of other partners from across the region. This whole process has taken longer than what we thought it would, but it has been worth it every step of the way because what we've experienced along the way um, has been really invaluable in teaching us many lessons about how change happens and how change happens in the 21st century, um, specifically using social media. I think I entered a mission and posted something. Holly is no stranger to social media. Her generation is deftly breaking down the old formalities that for decades brought ideas into the public square. And Holly believes the casual yet immediate nature of social networking is not just sparking civic thought, it's creating buy-in on a big scale. I was thinking, you know, how my generation really considers itself to be civic and what does that mean? I am very active on social networking sites like Facebook and Twitter, and I think it's a really interesting way to get your point across almost subtly. You don't have to stand at the corner anymore with a picket sign for, you know, days to get your point across. You can you can put a Facebook status saying, hey, I don't agree with proposition whatever, or, you know, hey, go out and vote today. I think it's important that people don't overlook these Web 2.0 technologies that are making it much easier to get our point across in, in ways that we feel comfortable with. But those informal online avenues that feed the public conscience are fighting for space alongside the mainstream media. Holly feels the press is casting a glaring light on the woes of Michigan's economy, which can drive people away from finding solutions. And I really think there needs to be an emphasis on good news stories. And it's almost hard to get information out there about good news. It's good news travels slow, I guess. Bad news is quicker to print and more people are willing to read it. And I, and I understand that sometimes bad news or statistics that show that Michigan isn't doing so well has its place because then you can identify the problem, but it's almost like enough's enough. It's time to start publicizing good information because otherwise people won't want to spend time here. Why would you want to spend time in a place where all you've heard is bad news? Well, I think that we could have them. At 26, Holly Hetzner is part of a critical mass of people that Michigan is trying desperately to hold on to. College educated, civic minded, and highly skilled. Holly wants to see them stay too. She believes the more they stay connected to their resources, the more likely they'll be to plant roots and be successful. I think a lot of it is just knowing what's available in the community and, and what does that mean? You know, that means going to community events, that means networking. I think a lot of people downplay the importance of networking, but I mean, that's how we both got our jobs is by who we know. And I, I mean, that's a huge part. And I think the more people you know in the community, the better your chances are of staying and being engaged and plugged in and, and maybe finding something that can sustain you for the long term. Local support for WKAR's By the People, Hard Times, Hard Choices project is provided by McNeil Lehrer Productions, the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, and the Rockefeller Brothers Fund.